Hey everybody, it's Big K Experience, and today is actually a big day for us because we're going to be broadcasting live from the B. The Spilled Milk show is going live, and um, this camera will not stop focusing. I don't understand what its problem is, but it's starting to make me a little angry. You know what I mean? Um, so you got to deal with it as I deal with it. See, there it goes. There it goes, like a stupid camera does. <laughs> uh, so yesterday I decided I'm going to take um, PSS certification, which is Peer Support Specialist Certification. Uh, to become, uh, obviously peer support, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to be doing that. Uh, see, there it goes again. What is its problem? Why does it do that? I'm not even doing anything. And it just keeps focusing. Like as if it's losing me every couple minutes. <sighs> Breathe it out, man. Breathe it out. Uh, so anyways, uh, as peer support, I would, I went up to go sign up for the classes so I could learn more about intensive outpatient, uh, uh classes. And... After I was done, I realized I had no ride back home, so <laughs> I had to walk. Well, yesterday was a little rainy, so I'm like, do ralu, 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 down the way. Boondock Saints reference, you like that? Um, down to my boss's office, which was no big deal up until I got to the point where there's no awnings anywhere, and then it started raining. So I'm like, great. So I'm trying to walk with my laptop, and I'm covering it up, and I'm trying to get a little bit farther down the street, and then it stops raining, and I'm like, sweet. It was only really a hardcore sprinkle. I mean, it wasn't like, you know thunderous rain or anything like drenching me but i'm walking down the, the this little canyon area where it's like big huge rock walls on each side right so i'm walking down there and um it's not raining not raining so i'm like yes thankfully because i didn't want the water pouring off the rock walls onto me and as soon as i get out of those and i start walking down the regular street again bam rain hits so i'm like all right i'm gonna stop at this place where i know there's an awning and go hang out underneath it well that didn't work out for me because um um it stopped raining as soon as I got there. Sorry, that, that blur out is driving me insane, and I have no idea why it's doing it. So, but I gotta make the video either way. So, uh, I went outside this morning, saw it was sprinkling. Obviously, made my hair on point, but it's super dark in my room right now. Maybe that's why it keeps focusing. So, I'm gonna have to get another light for in here. I'm sorry, guys. This video is gonna kind of suck. But, Oasis Day Spa today, live broadcast. Make sure you're there. You have a chance to win paraffin wax treatments. Um... Something where they shave your skin. We're going to do live broadcasts in order to tell you what it's all about and show you what it's all about. So make sure you come down and check that out. Uh, it, it'll be a good time, I promise you. It's a way to stay spa. You just spin the prize wheel, and whatever you land on, you win. It's that simple. It's really easy. Oasis Day Spa today. All right, it starts at noon and goes till 1. Oasis Day Spa today starts at noon and goes to 1. Um, I'll be sharing it on my Facebook page as well coming up. So, uh, yeah, anyways, I was drenched by the time I got to uh, my office. And I started doing, you know, my work like I normally do. And then Facebook booted me off all the groups. <laughs> what the? So I can't post any more groups. I have to call my friends and ask them to share it to the groups that said I could, like Maddie's Attic, uh, House of Steals and Deals, uh, Kingman Orphans and Onions, all these different pages that are allowing me to post on there. Uh, I can no longer post to because Facebook is stupid. Flat out. Uh, I got to get that done. Anyways, but you can always check it out on YouTube. I got my spilled milk show on YouTube. And I'll be right back with some nonsense. All right, so I'm just going to point this out real fast. It's about. Hey, everybody, it's a big K experience in the spilled milk show with the B. And I'm just going to point this out real fast that we see a lot of time travel movies that are far fetched. Uh, but did you know 1968 Planets of the Apes is the closest? It's stupid, but some Ronald Mallet, professor of physics at University of Connecticut, explains if we're going to time travel, it's going to be into the future. Uh, and that's according to Einstein's special theory of relativity. Now, this is the thing I don't understand about time travel, right? Because it just doesn't make sense to me. Time is literally a measurement. And it's a measurement between um, like wear and tear on something. You know what I mean? Like That's how I see it. So how could we make a measurement a different size measurement like that's what i don't understand i think that myself if we're going to time travel it would be because we're stuck on a ship for a very long time now i know time moves faster for in some areas but that's only in our heads like time doesn't actually move faster it's a measurement so now whether or not you're going to live longer is again the way the environment works around you i would imagine like for instance gravity or uh atmosphere things like that would affect time because um the wear and tear on your body would be less so you might live longer so it might seem like you have more time 
but really it's just less wear and tear on your body. So I don't understand how they say there's such thing as time travel. I don't get it personally, but more power to them for bringing it up. I guess we could go into space and come back and eat some running, running the show. Well, I guess we'll find out. I won't ever find out because I ain't ever going into space for no reason. I'm not one of those people. I'm not going to be like, how do you die on his way into space? For what? I don't know. To see if he could time travel to the future? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I got family and stuff down here. I'm, I'm, I'm straight. Are you fubbing your friends? Fubbing is snubbing others to look at your phone. It's one of those habits that can seem harmless, yet be infuriating to those around you. Where you direct your attention indicates your priority at the moment. And usually the priority of the phone. That's why I say when you text somebody is you're basically answering someone else in a conversation you're having in a group. Because don't actually have a text with someone across the room when you're in a group setting going, oh my god, this guy won't shut up. Or, oh my gosh, she's so hot. Or, he's so good looking. Or, whatever it is you say. Um... I mean, I totally write all the time. He's so good looking. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't. I'm not into dudes. But even if you're an excellent multitasker, using your phone while hanging with your friends sends the message that they're not important enough to warrant your full attention. I keep saying this all the time. It is true. When you're on your phone the whole time, nobody's as important to you as your phone and the, the people you're talking to. Now, if you work on your phone and you're over there, now you say, hey, I'm going to have to work while I'm here. So I'm going to answer emails and such. Then I get it, but I don't understand why you went to your friend's house. You just want the camaraderie of people sitting around you? Probably, because I'm that kind of way, too. Um, but once you know the why, you can start problem solving. For example, if you keep checking your screen because you don't want to miss a call from your sitter, set your phone to ring only if it's her, and let your friends know you're expecting a call. That's pretty fancy. You can do that with your phone. I never really looked into it. Um, I don't want to be confined by any one call, though, because like, what if I want something and someone calls me? And then, then I don't know. That's going to be upsetting to me. Um, but this allows you to manage your time better. So anyways, if you're going to use your phone around people, at least tell them, you know, I'm going to be expecting a call or I'm going to be writing somebody today. Tell them that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? All right. Next up, smiling adds years to your face. Grinning, smiling, and laughing adds wrinkles around your eyes. So much so that it can make you look as much as two years older than your chronological age. What? Time is moving by faster again? See, that's what I'm saying. It's just stupid. Like, it's all it's all wear and tear on the body and perception. But let's get off that subject because I'm sure I'm wrong. That, that's the word from researchers at the University of Western Ontario in Canada who also found good news. A surprised expression smooths those wrinkles. <gasps> so scare yourself every once in a while, you know? Um, a study found smiling increased the wrinkles around the eyes, which made people look older. But those who had a surprised look, which smooths wrinkles, looked younger. So those who laugh like this, oh, ho, 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 ho. like that, I imagine probably have less wrinkles. And the people are like, ha, 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 crazy talk. I don't know. But that's just kind of depressing because what, what are you supposed to do? Stop, stop laughing. Otherwise, you're going to look old as hell. Cut it out, you old bastard. How old are you, 25? Yeah, you look ridiculous. Smile again, I dare you. Or you're all telling your boyfriend, stop smiling at me. <laughs> oh, my God, you're going to look so old by at some point in time. That's terrible research. I kind of hate that research. Here is something that's actually very important and very serious. And I'm, gonna, I'm only going to touch this because I think it's kind of depressing. But heat waves can kill people. And by 2100, half of Earth's population could experience 20 days or more of life-threatening heat every year. And that's it, that's so important because of the fact that now we live in an area where there's air conditioning. You know what I'm saying? So it's not so bad. But for areas like in Asia or South America, actually some like, uh, what are those hills out by Virginia? The, um, sorry, I'm all, blah, 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 the rain. Um, you know, the Appalachians, there's people with no air conditioning. And if it starts to get hot out there, they are SOL. Or in the Middle East, I mean, think about all the homeless people that, that will probably die. So we need to fix this. But uh, even if we drastically reduce our CO2 footprint, it's still going to happen. It's still going to happen. So we need to fix uh, or come up with a more positive solution that can actually take all those elements out of the sky. And actually, I saw these plastic farms where they put up these filters up in the sky and it sucks the plastic out of the air. And they literally make furniture out of it. I saw it on CBS Sunday morning, so I believe them. Anyways, that's why 2100. So we need to get to it. We need to find ways to fund people that can come up with that kind of technology and not just the latest, the greatest, best phone. You know, I don't understand why these guys that have multi-billion dollar companies, for instance, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, why they're not putting money towards that. And because, uh, I mean, it's not like we wouldn't have to pay them to do it. The governments would have to pay them to suck the plastic out of the air. So why wouldn't they make that happen? Huge plastic farms, you know? Um, 
but obviously they got more important things to do, like find a plugin that'll help you watch porn and, and surf Facebook at the same time. So more power to them, I guess. This is kind of funny because South Dakota, um, not exactly known for their tagline, but this is a real bad tagline. So uh, South Dakota's got a real methamphetamine epidemic is on their hands right now. So on Monday, Governor Kristi Noem launched nearly half a million dollar campaign to increase awareness about the problem. The only problem is the slogan wasn't really thought it through. So here it is. <laughs> it's it's a commercial with a bunch of people saying, I'm on meth. Different races, ages, the whole nine yards. But the campaign's motto is meth, we're on it. <laughs> so that's not what it means, actually. The governor went on to explain it, which is terrible if you have to explain a tagline. But it's each one of us, no matter who we are, we're on the case of meth. So it meant like, meth, we're on the case. Um, but it didn't say we're on the case. It says, meth, we're on it. I wonder who came up with that. And they're like, yeah, meth, we're on it. That sounds legit. That sounds like we're fighting it. Uh, maybe they could have went with meth, they're on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like almost anybody could have changed that tagline to sound better. Um, but they didn't. So they kind of screwed that up. So I'm assuming they're going to go revamp the whole thing. Um, the campaign is to raise awareness. So I think that it's working. Uh, many, met, la, a Minneapolis marketing agency created the campaign, which South Dakota's Department of Social Services paid for at a cost of nearly $449,000. Another tweet asked how many rehab centers in rural areas that could have paid for that. Uh, or I'm sorry, that could have paid for it. So how many people could have went to rehab with that $449,000? Probably not that many. But, I mean, at least... Maybe 44 people could have went. Yeah, assuming it's like $10,000 a person. Uh, maybe you drop it down a little bit more to $3,000 a person, and then that could have helped out quite a bit, 100 people. But that's another thing, too, uh, that I, I, is a touchy subject for me, but the decriminalization of, of drug use. Because us throwing people in prison just makes sure they can't get jobs or makes them lose their jobs or makes them lose their family. Um, if you find them, I mean, imagine how many people don't drink and drive because they don't want to get the ticket. And once they get the ticket, they don't drink and drive anymore because they're not looking to pay $10,000. However, a drug addict's hustle is always on point. Like, um, they're willing to do whatever it takes to get drugs. So if it means paying a fine so they don't go to jail so they can keep hanging out, they're probably going to come up with the money or at least a payment plan. So we'd have more money coming in. Right now, all we're doing is imprisoning people and paying prisons a lot of money to house them. A lot. So uh, I would imagine we should probably cut that out, switch over to just heavy fines for being caught with drugs, and move on with our lives. You know, and if they don't pay the fines, then they go to jail. That sounds more uh, reasonable to me. Or they go to a rehab center or they have to pay for a rehab center. Make that part of their fines. I don't know. We got to do something because drug use is literally just a scapegoat. So nobody has to like cops don't have to actually catch real criminals because they can just spend their days catching drug addicts and it gets their numbers up. So they're actually doing their job so that uh, it can pay for the police force. But the police force can get paid for just by tickets. Um because these people that they're putting in prison aren't necessarily going out and getting jobs later and helping pay back the communities that they uh, have destroyed because they can't find jobs because they keep going to prison. I mean, come on. It's just common sense. Well, <clears throat> what a good vegan burger means is to not be cooked in meat residue. Burger King's Impossible Whopper has class action lawsuit against them because they are cooked on the same grill as regular Whoppers and burgers in general and leaving a burger residue that those patties are then put on and spin it around the, the the old crank. Now, uh, obviously, anybody that knows knows Burger King probably did not buy a whole new grill system for the Impossible Whoppers. So, for there to be a class action lawsuit, this is common sense. I mean, everybody talks about it. Well, there's probably a Whopper residue on it. That's why they taste so good. Maybe, maybe. But if you're going to a fast food chain to eat healthy, you got a problem. If you're going to a fast food chain because you want a double contestant, like maybe. Something that, that, that is out of the norm for you rather than your squash and, and spaghetti every day, uh, then you should have known better than to go to Burger King to eat that way. I mean, what an idiot. You're like, oh my God, you didn't cook it on a whole other grill? Of course not. We're Burger King. What's wrong with you? We're the Burger King. And we made a veggie burger with our burger grills, which cooked meat. I don't know. People are ridiculous. And if the class action lawsuit goes through, which hopefully it doesn't, well, I'll be good. But all they got to do is put a little warning on it. May contain some meat residue. I'd still eat it. In fact, if you haven't had it, it's fantastic. I mean, I'm going to give Burger King a big thumbs up. 
and the Impossible Company for coming up with that Whopper because they nailed it, doggy. They nailed it. It is delicious. Greatest gift life ever gives you is the experience. Thanks for being part of mine. It's a big experience in the spilled milk show on the beat.